is Aladdin. For those of you wondering, no, I don't own a 7-Eleven. <laughs> no, I don't drive a cab. <laughs> and I had absolutely, positively, nothing to do with the Oklahoma City bomb. <laughs> all right? I never really acknowledged myself being a true Bangladeshi. Does anyone have a rubber? <laughs> I would get these parts, the money was really good, but after a while I was getting so angry. Well, it's just that my family is full of crazy Muslims, and none of them talk like this. And I remember one director says, who was your father? Well, I don't really know. There's a void in my life, like, I really have to know who my father is. maybe a teenager when he first came here, that he came on a boat, came in the 1920s. He married a Puerto Rican woman and moved to Spanish Harlem. That was a time when South Asian immigration was actually banned. They landed in New York, and he decided to get off to look around. He claimed he got lost, and the ship left. There was a lady. He stayed in a rooming house, and there were other Indians there. He opened the restaurant in 1958, and shortly after that, we got married. She knew the system. She was American. She knew how to help these people. My dad was president of the Pakistan League of America. They started doing this annual boat ride. That was the most thrilling time. <laughs> Everyone around this table is related to someone who was in that 1952 photograph. They all built that world together. There's so many stories. We've been omitted from history. everyone and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions The Breeze. We bring you the latest in independent films and film festival news and we have uh, the co-directors here of the film In Search of Bengali Harlem. We have uh, Vivek Bald and Alaudin Ula. How are you gentlemen? Doing good. Thank you. Doing real well. Right well thank you so much for uh, for joining me today. So first question I'll ask is tell me a little bit about In Search of Bengali Harlem. Well, it, it started like 20 years ago. I was a comedian uh, in Los Angeles in Hollywood and I was auditioning and I was coming across like a wall of like stereotypical parts. And what I was getting was a lot of casting directors and producers were telling me, you know, we only see you this way. So I just got tired of playing the stereotype, which was sort of, you know, the terrorists and whatnot. And so I went back to New York and I, I was really interested in sort of taking back the narrative and creating a story that showed, you know, primarily Bengalis in a positive light. And I saw Vivek's two films, which was Taxiwala and Mutiny. They were both amazing films. And I, I told Vivek that I wanted to start this journey uh, to figure out who my dad was. Mm -hmm. And we sort of, you know, went on this journey and Vivek did this phenomenal research about this sort of lost history of these men that came to Harlem and what went from being a story about my dad being a sort of revelation of this lost history of these men that came to Harlem and created a new life with African-American and Puerto Rican women. And it just became this journey of discovery. And so the film kind of highlights that and it highlights me eventually going back to Bangladesh which is kind of funny because all my friends when they found out that I was going to Bangladesh, they were telling me I was about as Bengali as SpongeBob so Ooh. that that was an interesting, you know, journey. So the film kind of highlights, you know, sort of my transformative journey to figure out who my father was and ultimately my parents' journey leaving Bangladesh to come to Harlem and, and, and settle in America. Interesting. Quite yeah, go ahead. No, to give a, a little bit of of background when when Aladdin first um approached me about the film in the 1990s, um you know, he mentioned that his father had come from what's now Bangladesh, what was then like colonized British India to the United States in the 1920s and had settled in Harlem and married a Puerto Rican woman and had a family. Um, and what stood out to me is that that was actually a time in which Asian immigration was banned, right? So we have, the United States has this long history of almost a century in which 
um, Asian immigration was, was banned, starting from the Chinese Exclusion Act in the 1880s and going all the way to the 1960s. And so um, it, it just really struck me, how was it that Aladdin's father even got here in the 1920s? Um, and how was it that he was able to make a life under the radar um, of, of the immigration laws at that time? And, um, you know, once we started pulling at the thread of Aladdin's father's story, it just became clear that actually his father was part of a, a much larger migration of men who did horrendous work on British steamships, escaped that work, you know, when they, when they got to New York, jumped ship, disappeared into the the docklands of, of New York City and then made their way to Harlem for this new life among African-Americans and Puerto Ricans. It's, it sounds like, and it definitely shows that you've done the research on this. Could you go a little bit more into how you did the research in this subject matter? Did you go to the library and look things up? Did you reach on certain books? Uh, where did you come up with all this history? Well, I mean, some of it's, you know, a lot of it started from just Aladdin had certain kinds of memories uh -huh. uh, his father's friends um, who were all older Bengali Muslim men who uh, were married to African-American Puerto Rican women um, and various little bits and pieces that Aladdin remembered. Um, and what, what I did when I started the research is that, well, first of all, I, I entered into a PhD program. I basically uh -huh. became a historian in order to do the research for the film. Uh, um, and I started the research by looking up um, marriage records in the municipal archives in New York City um, and just looking up certain kinds of names that were common among Bengali Muslims um, and started finding one after another after another of these records of um, Bengali Muslim men in the 1920s and 30s marrying um, Black and Latino women in, in Harlem and the Lower East Side. And then I just went into a deep dive into every possible archive you know, census records, ship records, um, you know, everything that I could find, just finding all the bits and pieces of these records of these men who had come at that time under the radar of the immigration laws and created these new lives. And um, yeah, and, and it became clear also that, um, you know, the African-American and Puerto Rican women um, who they partnered with were, were sort of the crucial part of the story in the sense that they were um, created the possibility for these men to start new lives and often yeah. start businesses and, um, you know, put them up in boarding houses, all these kinds of things. And so at this yeah. moment when the United States as a nation was, was um, you know, criminalizing the entry of Asian immigrants to the U.S., it was African-Americans and Puerto Ricans who lived up to the promise of inclusion of the United States. Yeah, you're talking about the bloodline and the history of Harlem right there. I mean, you can trace it all the way back and then uh, right to its uh, rich fruits that we currently have in the present. And uh, my my final question that I have is for you, Al uh, You did say that you started your career in Hollywood and then you got uh, sick of being typecast in different types of roles. Uh, what are your thoughts on the current state of Hollywood within representation and the roles that are being cast uh, for that demographic? Well, I, I think it's gotten better. I think, you know, when you see it's about the stories and characters, I think the writing is much stronger. I think, you know, there are if you look at the show like Beef, you know, yeah. it's, it's totally written, produced, directed, starred, edited, shot by, you know, Asians. I think when we control the narrative, we have, uh, you know, characters that are more humanized. And I think it's important, even in comedy, like to have representation, to me, representation is everything. If you don't have representation, then you don't have your voice in the room where you're creating the art. So I welcome diversity, but if it's just, you know, a story where we're not even part of the creative process, it's not really anything with nuance. And so, you know, I always say, I don't want to be a stereotype. I want to be a prototype. And as long as it's representation, we're going in the right direction. But when wow. we're synced out of the creative process, then you know, it becomes, you know, Apu on The Simpsons. It, yeah. it, may, it may be funny, but for a lot of us, we don't think it's funny. So, you know, this is why comedy is very complicated, because if we control a narrative, we can bring a nuance to the joke. We can bring a nuance. So, you know, we will have more of like Richard Pryor and less Stephen Fetchett. 
Uh, if only I, I I love Richard Pryor's work. You said a lot of great uh, nuggets of wisdom there while you were describing uh, the de uh, demographics and representation within these roles. So uh, I appreciate your words, and we hope that our audience is able to check out In Search of Bengali Harlem, which is currently playing at the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival going on right now. Uh, do you know when the film will be screening at the festival? Oh, it's uh, it's Saturday, tomorrow night, Saturday, the sixth of May uh, at eight thirty. And then our next New York screening is actually at the Harlem International Film Festival. All uh, right. And uh, I, you'll have to check their website for the exact date and, and time. It's all good. We will be uh, covering the Harlem Film Festival as well. So you'll be, you'll be, I'll be seeing you guys there in person. So I'm glad we we're able to talk uh, now. And then when you see me, you'll be like, hey, it's that guy. Uh, okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, uh, uh, Vivek Bald and Alaudin Ula, to talk about your film, In Search of Bengali Harlem, here on The Breeze. Thank, thank you. you. For, thank you for having us.